experiencing the heartbreak of being passed up. And mm -hmm. I was kind of, it was a trajectory. I was in a smaller, smallish district and I was assistant superintendent for five years. And it was like, I was next in line for that superintendent position. Mm -hmm. um, I had solid relationships, right? With staff, mm -hmm. community, um, with um, the board. And it was nothing short, but shocking. When I oh. applied, I went for it. And you know, it's a small community. Everybody knows everybody. There was a lot of embarrassment you know, and just kind of humiliated. Mm -hmm. um, there was some political, um, of course, when decisions are made like this, right? right. Some political and, um, you know, backlash, community revolt. And I, at the time, thought to myself, okay, I have two choices here. Number one, I can stay and I can like be victim to a district that says, we don't want you, but still stay. Right. Or I can pick myself off the ground because during those first few days, George, as I'm sure that you and I know certainly other leaders have experienced, you're in like this deep, dark place of my world's been turned upside down. And I don't even know really what my purpose is because I thought my purpose was being here. Right. And now that I'm being told it's not, I got to kind of redefine things in yep. my own mind. And so that's where I was like, okay, I, I did the grieving, I did the crying, I did the, you know, the behind the scenes, just outright pissed off piece. And then once I got to that point of, I can't stay, but I don't know where, mm -hmm. it was like the opportunities just kept coming. Right. And I picked where I'm currently at, the charter schools, and it has been absolutely phenomenal, but I wouldn't have even had the opportunity to write, to speak, right. to do these other things if I would have been in that role of superintendent in that district. It just wouldn't have happened. It's amazing. You know, I have a very good friend. And if that friend is listening right now, text me that you're listening because that went through exactly the same thing that you're talking about. And they were by far the best person for the position. And it was like the politics and not focus on what is best for the school dis district, what's not best for the teachers, but you know, what makes the, the board look really good or, you know, or, you know, there may be fear of some, you know, that happens and it's unfortunate. And I think that sometimes it's, it's a sign that you, it, it, Hey, it's time to go and serve another place. Like when, when educators say this to me, like, Oh, it's really hard to leave these kids, you know, like, I've invested so much in them. I'm like, but there are other kids who need support as well. Right. 100%. Like it's not, it's, yep. you're, and within a week, I promise you, you'll be like, wow, I can never leave these kids. Right. And that's how we feel. Cause we, there's a emotional connection to our communities and things like this. But I learned that I, I don't stay in places where, you know, I think this is a really important aspect. I've been talking a lot about this over the last couple of years. Specifically, there is a difference between the idea of being valued and feeling valued. And if, uh, leaders don't actually make that connection between the importance that people feel valued. Mm -hmm. You can say all you want, mm -hmm. but when you, you develop them and I, I can't remember the book, uh, but I read it said you should never hire someone externally to a leadership position, uh, unless they are 30% better. Now, how you measure that than anybody else, because there's all those things you have to teach them about the culture, about the community and things like that too. That if they're not like head and you know shoulders above, way better than anybody else, then then it doesn't really make sense to do that. Yeah. So I really appreciate you sharing that story, and I know uh, specifically people that I've connected with that have felt passed over and not for the right reasons, 